live for Data on Kubernetes Community, live stream number 133. Super stoked. I can't believe it was almost a year and a half ago since I interviewed the speaker that we're having today, who's an amazing Data on Kubernetes Community OG. His name is Alkin. We'll get to him in a second. Before we do that, as usual, we got to announce that we got more live streams coming up, 134 and on 135 coming up this week. Uh, tomorrow, we get an intro to Cloud Native Postgres, right? For all you Postgres fans out there, we know there are many. And so I will drop the link here. Uh, we will be joined by two wonderful folks from EDB who will be explaining all about that um, in detail. And I will drop the other link for the other live stream that we have, three live streams in one week, um, that will be on Thursday. And that will be as Patrick McFadden, another Data on Kubernetes community OG, and who gives the first DOK community live stream in July of 2020. It seems like that was about 500 years ago now. Um, that being said, our speaker today is no stranger to databases, no stranger to challenges. Today, he's going to be telling us about 90 days on ClickHouse. And we'll also incorporate something else in that there too. And it's very fitting that, you know, Kubernetes has such a strong nautical theme because we'll be tying that in as much as we possibly can. I asked him um, before we got started if he was either on land or at sea. Turns out he's on land now, but very soon to be at sea. Alkin, can you please show yourself? Say hello to everybody. How are you doing? All right. Hello, everybody. <laughs> doing all right. And I'm super stoked to be back. I think I was a number 22 in the first yeah, yeah, round, yeah, yeah. something oh, yeah. like that, I guess. Yes. All yes. right. Yeah. And yes. anyway, that was a great, it was a great time when we talked for the first time. Nice to have you back. Always been a great part of our community, answering folks questions, getting people uh, situated. You've got over two decades of database experience. I mean, just a very, very solid person to have with us. You are now working at, and luckily you informed me before we started, at Sista Data. If you want to tell us a little bit more about that, what you're doing there. Yes. All right. I'm going to be talking about that actually a little bit more okay, cool, 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 cool. at the end. I'll leave that at the end okay. because I want to, you know, spend our time over here. Let's, let's get started, I guess, with just like a little bit of introduction. And I want to get connected with people, people who are actually, um, you know, either watching this or will watch the webinar later on. Uh, please do connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Uh, it's, it's great to learn and and get connected so i can actually pass you know messages and and, and be a proxy to other database resources or, or people around that community so i've been uh, a database person like bart said uh for a long time but in the meantime i made a transition to open source databases so i don't talk about too much about previous enterprise dba hat uh, but i've been uh, working in the uh, open source database um, leaders in in the community for uh, Pity and Parcon and Planet Scale uh, as both DBA, you know, like um, basically a DBA. Well, all other terms don't matter. It's a DBA is a DBA. So I also been speaking, talking, and, and actually helping people to get around. Um, any questions, hit me up. I'd like to also uh, say that I'm a sailor and people who are sailing or, or love sailing, uh, we have something in common. Uh, you could actually uh, connect me on that. Uh, I've been sailing since I was a child, and um, it's been a passion for me. I got around finally at uh, hand, get my hands on on a sailboat and started sailing and using it at a boat office and uh, spent my summers in, in the beautiful Mediterranean between Turkey and Greece mostly. And uh, I like to do like long uh, sails challenges and, and interesting stuff. Also doing other outdoor sports like um, diving, spearfishing, you know, uh, you name it, whether, whether it's on the land or, or water, uh, spend time on outdoors a lot. So that's how you can get your... Um... Bart, I'm going to continue unless you stop me um, over here. No, no, so... sail away. Sail All away. right, I'm just going to yeah. smooth sail away and hopefully there'll be some questions related to not the data on Kubernetes, but the sailing. <laughs> have, oh, yeah, but if you have right. either sailing or data on Kubernetes questions... So are, are, we, are we still going to do uh, the, the trivia? Oh, we definitely can. <laughs> we definitely can. <laughs> so this is this this is like I started with that. So I thought like, oh, oh that was a good idea to do that. Let's do a, a trivia question on on sailing. So, what is the left and right side of the boat are referred as? So and why? You know, so why there's no left or right on the boat? This is like a common thing. And oh, it's on your left or it's your right. Well, 
Um, unfortunately, there is no left or right on a boat. Either it's a sailboat, motorboat, large ship, or whatever you know, or a ferry. There's no right, right or left. There's there is only port and a starboard side. Because if you tell people that's on your right, it could be on your left. Wherever you're looking, it might be on a bow or stern of the boat. So the boat has these uh, boating terms, and that was the trivia question. So I didn't let people think about it too much. But you know, it's it's. It sounds a little awkward in the beginning, why it's a port or a starboard. Then there's also the history of it, that which I won't get in. There's, it's, you could look up on the Wikipedia and why it's called port, because there was no engine before and you know, people you know, like using different steering and, and paddling, and then the sails came out. Um, but we'll continue with these trivia questions next. I have a few, few more uh, that, that uh, I like to share with other people. So, all right. Well, I've didn't mention that I'm also the co-author of the, the MySQL cookbook where I switched off my um, career to open source databases. I specifically focused on MySQL for the last uh, little bit over a decade. And, um, and then finally, um, I have made some attempts on, on the books before. Uh, it was a challenge in the beginning, finding a publisher and, and, and a subject. Uh, luckily, my friends, some, some of those um, subjects were nailed but with, with O'Reilly and, and got finally uh, get into the book of cookbook, which was uh, previously authored by Paul and uh, well written book, got a lot of solutions, recipes, you know, it's like mostly made for hey, how do I do this with MySQL on this and, um, and then also uh, had to be redone for the um, emerging technologies and um, and the new version of MySQL. Uh, my um, strong and and um, technically expert co-author Sveta has uh, made an amazing um, effort to make this book possible. Uh, we are on the uh, pre-production stage, and it will be hopefully printed in the next month or so. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to share some of that with with our community. And um, hopefully people who answers uh, um, sailing trivia questions will win the books and stuff like that. So that will happen. So something to give back to the community. And uh, it's on, it's on pre-release and this will be our, um, you know, I think it's a lizard, uh, the animal thing. And uh, this will be our, the book cover. And uh, any questions, uh, Sveta or myself um, <clears throat> will be happy to answer uh, anything about so i want to continue on the books because that made uh, something we're going to talk about clickhouse today and uh, and our and our you know subject is is clickhouse and uh, what i do at at sister data as a, a evp of global services first the you know the first 90 days what you do about if you if you switch to a, a new technology or focus on a new technology let's let's put it that way um, and you look for a book and um, and I was lucky to find this book because it's the only book, technically speaking. Although ClickHouse um, sounds a little um, a new technology, but it's not. It's been there for a while. Um, unlike unlike MySQL, it's not it's not there for like quarter century, but it's been there for a while. I used to work at Percona, so Percona has been um, also a pioneer. On, on promoting ClickHouse as, a, as an open source database. And there's a, there's a link between, we'll talk about between Alt Altinity and, and Percona uh, partners um, in, in the database business. So this is the book I found. I actually did one ahead and bought the book. I don't know if I could show it over to you. And um, it's got the database fundamentals overview, which is, which is um, uncommon for these type of books. Um, it's got comparison examples for the different data stores. So it talks about other solution, not only focuses on ClickHouse. Got a lot of tips and tricks with how to do things with ClickHouse or what it covers and does. And uh, it has an amazing summary for beginners. I did uh, scam through uh, most of the book and I focused on some of the areas and I really love the fundamental section. Also, another nugget from this book is every after every chapter or section, there is a little uh, questionnaire and, and, a, and also an amazing summary for that chapter. So it's, it's very easy to, to follow. Um, if you're into ClickHouse, kind of recommend this book. Um, if you're a beginner for databases, still still good good book to, to begin with. So, so that's enough with the books. Let's talk about ClickHouse. Um, 
uh, ClickHouse is a column there's storage. So uh, it's got, it's cloud compatible. Uh, what that means is like, pretty much like if you know Postgres or MySQL, other open source databases, you can actually uh, still utilize your, your SQL um, techniques like writing inserts, so like update lead statements. Of course, it's open source and it's important for us open source. It's got a shared nothing architecture can utilize like parallel execution and uh, and you utilize uh, resources that that are given um, because it's it's made for um, analytical solutions. It's got a very rich and aggregate functions and um, and and actually enables uh, people to use compression and encoding along with this uh, this realm of of uh, database management system, which is which is amazing because um, these were basically technologies out there for the other databases, um, speaking of MySQL, came very late in the picture. So um, having an adoption to these technologies, like new compression technologies and, and supporting new encoding in the, in the database, it actually helps a lot to, to make it fast and, and, and utilization. This way, um, a lot of the applications or a lot of the use cases can be <clears throat> converted into using newer newer technologies like um, you know compression and uh, and uh, encoding um, of course there are like many many features which we will not get into this is not going to be a boring uh, clickhouse internals uh, talk um, uh, but um, it actually comes with different engine types and and there are two uh, family over here. Uh, that covers uh, the merge tree and the, and the log engines. Uh, that also it tells us something that, okay, this database is basically written for certain specific loads, can be adopted to uh, the, the loads that, that are, are uh, critical for the businesses to utilize. Um, again, it materialized views, external data connectors uh, to post Postgres and um, and MySQL, some others also are supported. Data types, JSON, and and functions are are super rich. Um, I would I would just recommend checking out each of these whether they are actually applicable for the for your use cases where the traditional uh, OLTP RDBMS is struggle with your archive data, your CDC, your data warehousing, your BI. Even you could use it basically for AI and other other uh, applications in that in that sense. So this is the basically the over overview of of these um, features. Um, again, we we talked about columnar storage. I'm not going to get into details. There's a bunch of uh, information out there. Uh, data is stored in columns, not the rows. So that's the main difference between the uh, the traditional you know OLTP databases. Again, it's not meant for OLTP, so consistency levels and the isolation levels are 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 different than your your transactional databases. Do not put um, what online payment system over here. Don't don't put like um, uh, critical uh, transactional systems on this system. But you can analyze all of that in 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 in, in ClickHouse in short. So that's where where I leave it with. Um, we said about SQL compatible. Uh, basically, this is this is um, important. A lot of the key value stores, a lot of the other solutions, did not come with um, proper SQL parser, and uh, and every statement that actually like uh, like an insert statement, for example, uses the full SQL parser, that which is called in ClickHouse, and there's a data format parser. Basically, when we send a query, uh, it actually parses that and then and and got got a meaningful. Uh, database uh, evaluation made and then and then it's it's parsed through. Uh, why is this important? Well, because the 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 compat compatible uh, solutions don't have or or don't utilize this type of type of um, which makes it a little bit um, difficult for people like myself, like people coming from ops versus dev. If you're like a dev person, that's okay. You know, you actually write everything in the code and then. And then, and then, but what I like to do is, is basically test things on the, on the, you know, the SQL compatible environment, uh, run, run benchmarks, run queries, run, run tests, and then go in the programmatical way. Uh, this could be a solution for that. That's important. Um, the other thing is the shared nothing architecture actually 
it it refers to splitting and and um, and basically utilizing your CPU and and storage and I/O network, all those resources in that sense, and um, and and um, this is an important architecture to making the the mod you know modern databases to be able to. Uh, utilize smaller pieces of data, which we will get into for Kubernetes operators, sharding and, and replication, and being able to utilize more resources in a smaller set of data where the data can be very large or, or, or bloated. So let's, let's talk about a little bit sharding. So sharding has been very popular for the last 10 years. Who needed sharding? Mostly nobody uh, other than the hyperscalers. But now that is not the case. Now, meaning like the recent years. Yes, people will require sharding because data is either growing exponentially or unexpectedly, or it wasn't planned well. Well, when the data becomes like super large, you want to be able to break that up into smaller pieces so that your existing applications and or uh, database management systems can actually access the data faster without breaking the bank. Yes, you can get the largest instances now in the cloud uh, while running them are very costly. Yes, some, some, some applications like gaming applications, instant coin offerings, Yes, they do offer, they do utilize, but mostly are they are designed to run, run very uh, large um, clusters of, of sharded environment. And along with that, you, want, you still want to use replication. Replication is not meant for backup and recovery, but it's for high availability. And, and high availability, when you mix and, and, and be able to use sharding and replication, now your hands are, are actually stronger managing your databases and uh, the good the good the good news is uh, clickhouse can both utilize and the sharding and and the replicas uh, along with this ecosystem um speaking of my experience with mysql well mysql natively supported replication but the sharding wasn't there sharding is still not native to to mysql but with this the great CNCF open source project. Uh, the framework actually provides that. Postgres has a similar solution, but they did not come. As they actually become an additional product on top of the existing product, they were basically a little bit difficult to adopt and people are still struggling with the adoption. But the solution is there versus ClickHouse came out of the box with both replication and sharding which actually makes it very um, easier to adopt from the beginning or plan, let's, let's put it that way. And it also uses Zookeeper. There are other solutions uh, that other uh, sharding solutions like Vitesse, for example, etcd, a console has been used also uh, as a key value store for the metadata uh, storage where the shards are. Um, we're not gonna get into that, but in short, both replication and sharding using Zookeeper. ClickHouse has its own ClickHouse Keeper, uh, which was released recently, I believe. Uh, be able to manage the number of nodes and 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 actually scale. Utilize better better utilization of of um, the hardware resources. Also, uh, being able to um, basically geolocate the nodes. Also, that's also useful for the uh, low latency. Uh, solution. There's a bunch of other stuff that, that is needed. Like, why do I need charting? Well, that's a dis different discussion. Also needs evaluation from your data standpoint, but basically ClickHouse does come up with, with that. And basically, if you uh, did, we did one of the, um, you know, um, sharding and replica um, POCs, and, uh, and you can actually basically have a number of shards and number of um, replicas managed within the um, ClickHouse ecosystem. All right. So the other thing is is uh, that ClickHouse excels in in the execution of parallel. Uh, I'm because I've been around this uh, database business uh, for a long time. Parallel database queries 
were not very easy to um, implement in the beginning of the, the database. Yes, the parallel execution is, is taught to be trivial, but it's not. Even in, in the modern system, they still struggle, struggle um, because of the, the nature of the uh, online transaction uh, processing. But where we actually go into a little bit of a eventual consistent systems, parallel execution becomes more of a thing than, than a struggle. And, and, and ClickHouse is one of the leaders taking advantage of, of all the resources available for the di distributed processing in the multiple nodes. So that's another thing to look at. Um, again, going back to the, the features of, of ClickHouse, it comes with a bunch of aggregate functions. And I, looking at the monthly release cycle, uh, the more or, or um, aggregate functions being added, or there are improvements to the aggregate functions. So um, there are generic aggregate functions that you would use on databases. So that's no uh, surprise for people who are coming from a database background. Uh, there are parametric uh, uh, aggregate functions, which is a little bit of a programmatic things that you would write on a, like a stored procedure or a function function in a database, which is embedded in the code. But once they are built in, they are technically more performant than the external ones. Also, uh, they are they are actually easy to utilize. There is also the combinators of the, the aggregate functions, which actually you could use if an array type of aggregate functions. Definitely look up in the documentation if you're interested in a specific solution that you would struggle on a regular or, or known uh, database solution. Um, something that you wrote to be able to handle this programmatically, but it didn't scale or you lost um, the, uh, the management or, or maintenance of that, of that program, you can maybe have a solution in here. So we said uh, there are, uh, the fast is relative, right? The fast is, is, is fast, but how fast? It depends. The answer is depends, but um, we are um, known in the ClickHouse community that this solution is, is faster than, than others. Uh, but when, it, when we say it's fast, also, it has to be cost efficient, right? If I were to um, spend millions on a solution, but it's 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 uh, lightning fast, is that solution for me? Uh, Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, the answer that I would uh, hear from uh, customers will be no, because you have a budget, you have a system, and you're maintaining of it, and um, and but if improved performance. Uh, seen and the competitors uh, or, or or alternate solutions that put it um, have, have 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 recognized clickhouse to be uh, a fast so and in the meantime use cases and usage is increasing what that means for the community is that you will know more about it as it's being adopted so uh, you can't tell a technology whether it's, it's super fast or not unless it's been put on on real production workload. So that's, uh, that's where we stay. So, all right, uh, we are going to talk about data on Kubernetes. That's our main subject. Uh, all, yes, Mark. Um, so this is a question from Ricky and he's asking, what is CDC? Is that like common data collection or something? You mentioned that ClickHouse could be used for CDC. Yes, it's actually change data capture. Um, change data capture. Yes, right. change data capture. This is um, not new. Uh, it has been a very long um, BI uh, solution that uh, many uh, organizations, um, large e-commerce site has used uh, to keep track of change data. Uh, there were multiple uh, use cases for that. One of them is, is the auditing. Like what happened to my you know, transaction? Who changed when and what? Um, it, where I worked in one large project at at um, 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 at eBay was uh, to keep track of 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 price changes of an item. Uh, so there's auctions. There's also price changes by the market and the demand, and all that all that information is a super huge overhead for your existing online transaction data. If you keep 
all that data, um, it's it's it could be like 100x or 1000x the normal transactions that you would put insert update delete on your on your uh, online transactions. So hopefully that answers that question. Are there any other questions? When can we get into Kubernetes? All right, now. All right, let's 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 talk about a little bit of the Kubernetes. Is is Kubernetes data on Kubernetes still a con controversial subject? Bart, is that is that still a thing? It looks like it because we had an interesting, we saw an interesting post today in LinkedIn, and the person who posted it mentioned that if there's a community, it's because it's still really hard to do and it's very painful. So I went, oh. what do you think about that? Yeah. Well, I I think the other way around. I Good. think if there is a <laughs> if there is a community, there is an interest and 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 will, and also there is going to be an effort by you know open source contributors to that end. Meaning, why would they why would people sit down and, and write operator, which we'll get into a minute, right? And that's that's on time and material, and and technically speaking, return of investment is. Uh, very little or none if you don't monetize it. So we'll we'll talk into that. I think uh, the if there is a community and a strong support to that community, it is it is amazing, and it is also uh, something on demand. Um, so data on Kubernetes is uh, community and use cases. We are hearing more, and that's why we are here. And as as you're you're you know kind of leading the community, you know more and you listen more people than, than uh, most people have spent time on it as, as, uh, as basically uh, there are more and more use cases. And what we Agreed. want is people yeah. to come out and tell us their stories, tell us their production experiences. Well, it could be a success story, but if there's a failure, we want to hear about that also. Absolutely. The post and that, that it's, way, it's, that's we where we really learn. Exactly. Exactly. One, we don't make that mistake. Two, we learn to improve and 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 basically make it better, right? So is it in production or, or production grade yet? Well, yes, uh, I think Kubernetes and the data, they actually been on production for a long time, but it may not be your your you know like mom and pop shop, mostly like some some people at scale, right? Some 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 companies at scale has been utilizing. Have they shared? Yes, they did. Can we actually match to them? Not yet. Maybe. Maybe yes. So, so that's where I will, I will, I will leave it at. But I'm open for conversations. From my previous experience at Planet Scale, uh, with with this community on on um, Kubernetes was very big. Request and and implementation was very big. Uh, adoption was slowly growing. That's what I can I can say. What technology was that? Just to remind, it was MySQL, it was Vitesse, and Kubernetes. So if you all combine all of them and, and basically have an orchestration system that can run this ecosystem, of course, it's going to need a bunch of things to, you know, the Kubernetes, the storage, the other layers, whether it's in the cloud or on-prem uh, or, or bring your own Kubernetes solution. It, it was going to need an orchestration around all of that. Of course, I won't get into that, but there's also security and compliance. There is a bunch of other stuff that need to be taken care of. So the operators, let, let's talk about, we just mentioned about the test operated by PlanetScale. There's an open source operated by PlanetScale. Uh, PlanetScale has been a leader on, on, on um, the, the MySQL operator in terms of that. Uh, and it's also utilizing for its own solution. Percona is, is an open source uh, provider for uh, MySQL, MongoDB, and Postgres, and, and it's got solutions for all of those um, as, a, as an operator. And the operator actually um, has been new, but the platform-wise is being used, and that's what uh, the, the focus area is. Yes, there is a ClickHouse, that's our subject today, ClickHouse Kubernetes operated by Altinity. That is the only operator that I know as of today, as an open source operator, there may be other operators out there, proprietary, not public repos, but the others that I've seen uh, on at GitHub were a fork of Altinity's operator so far. If there are others, please do let me know or send a comment or, or um, let us know or introduce the operator that are actually uh, done for ClickHouse. 
There is a new, fairly new Oracle MySQL InnoDB cluster operator. And um, I've been hearing new operators. Uh, if you know more, let me know. All of these operator means data on Kubernetes. Like all of these, including ClickHouse, are data on. If there were no really, <laughs> it's funny that uh, someone said that there's community or there's a need for it. If there were no interest by people needing, this is a lot of um, engineering. It's a lot of time. There's a lot of money and, and, and material to produce these uh, high quality operators to make things possible. That's, uh, that's what my, my comment on that. Um, Alternatives operator is, is pretty powerful. I'm sure uh, there's, there's a lot of um, effort went in, but what it did is these, like the main features is to be able to orchestrate the ClickHouse ecosystem, including user management, being able to do version upgrades, and scaling in 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 the in the um, ecosystem, of course, there is going to be a lot of uh, features added. But click operators are, from my perspective, operators are not meant for like a um, turnkey solution for for uh, database people. Okay, so let's put it that way. Uh, if you had um, workloads running on Kubernetes, you're probably running um, services that, that are not stateful. So running stateful workloads in, in Kubernetes, you will require to make a lot of modifications. So the operators helps us customize things. So as, as you can see, you know, three out of like what, um, you know, eight, 10 features, it's customized storage provisioning, customized pod templates, customized service, customized uh, cluster management, customized user management. All of that you can customize with an operator. Basically, uh, it's going to be YAML file that you will plug it in based on your needs and apply it to your, apply it to your cluster. This, this makes things to be one, very dynamic to, to be able to orchestrate it. So you can write something on top of the operator to drive the operator to do the, do the things for you. And that way, that way your data on Kubernetes can be orchestrated along with your other ecosystem. Or, or simple answer will be, you could basically take the operator or write your own operator based off of the one of the operators and customize it for your needs out of the box. So you have two ways to reach your goal to put data on Kubernetes. But are there any other questions? Maybe I can just take a breather over here. No, that was a really good way. That was a really good way of putting it. And I think also to start talking about data on Kubernetes and not talk about operators, I think it's a pretty significant mistake. Um, because like you said, if you see or hear the word operator, that's what we're talking about. Yes. Now, different things that go into that. Uh, what What is the problem that it's trying to resolve? Who are the people that are going to be building it? What are the necessary technical skills that those people need to have? I say this not as a person with lots of technical expertise, but this is live stream number 133. And we've talked about these things a lot. So I think it's a really, really good point for anybody who's starting out there. Um, Ask people who've been involved in the process of building an operator and, and also understanding as well that as of right now, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because of talking to folks that, you know, that have worked on Vitesse, because of uh, talking to all different kinds of people at, you know, Percona, Datastax, Kate Sandra, you name it, et cetera, and also the CAS operator too. As of right now, it seems to be the best solution that we have to run data on Kubernetes. Although in the future, there could be deeper integration, something that was talked about by Rick Vasquez and, and, and Deep D as well in, a, in our panel that we did last year in October. What do you think about that? Do you think that, you know, things that get mentioned, there will be the operator to control all operators. Um, what do you think, what, what would you expect in the next six months to a year from now? Yeah, I think there will be some uh, solutions out there similar to Kubernetes uh, ecosystem in to, to drive the operators. Yes, I think there will be some more common framework to be able to run all these YAML files or things that I want to do at scale 
uh, that will be a, that's what I see. I don't know if there is any solution right now within the CNCF framework or, or others outside. Um, I would be very interested to see it, but I agree with that. Operator is the way to go on data on Kubernetes. At least an excellent starting point. And that's like, you're like, what, what do I do now? Answer is go find an operator for your you know, data source. And that data source will be able to run in, in the Kubernetes cluster uh, in no time. And, I, and that's where you can make all your configuration changes and, and, and your you know, fine tuning to reach to a point where you can run a you know, POC benchmark or a workload that, that uh, you know, basically runs along with your other uh, Kubernetes applications. Very, very good. Awesome. Cool. Let's keep going. So I want to like, the, the reason I said that this is like where you start basically within a few minutes of you having access to a Kubernetes uh, cluster, you basically take one of the, you know, YAML files, which is basically completely open source, go and edit yourself, go and read yourself and, 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 uh, and run it in no time. This is no difference from the, any operator, any operator runs this way. I've, I've, you know, tested or POC several of them uh, as of today. Basically, all of them uh, are are you know installing the operator, and the operator once it, it operator installs itself, you run your you know namespaces and 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 get your uh, quick start uh, files, and then within within minutes of of forking your um, Kubernetes cluster. Or your mini cube on your on your Mac on your local PC, uh, you're running your um, you know data on Kubernetes basically, which is super cool. I mean, you don't need to like um, you know provision even a, a virtual machines or 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 find you know like a, a virtual nodes. Um, yes, you can do all of this in, in similarly in, in Docker if you're like a you know Docker uh, person. Um, Kubernetes uh, helps me understand a little better the ecosystem in general. Whereas you run something in Docker and then and then iterate over to to do certain uh, test or integration. Um, but the Kubernetes is actually basically sticky, and and it runs. As, as you run the, the data on Kubernetes, you are able to access the full set of um, solution within the minimum required um, resources, which we call it a pod, which is amazing that already broken down to a minimum, minimum cost, where it actually serves the purpose for me to access the data on Kubernetes with the technology that I want to. Yes, there are like very fancy stuff that you could do with the operator. You know, basically we're using the templates, provision a, a, a storage option on, on, you know, from the cloud providers, get like fancy a user, user and role management system to access things. And, uh, and even more, you could actually add a sidecar uh, to, to your um, environment and then, you know, attach your, your favorite, uh, monitoring solution, favorite your your favorite uh, tooling solution to that which we did, you know, previously, and um, and other other solutions. Oh, I have my database, I have my operator running. I can run my you know sharded replica set on it, but I don't have these tools. Well, you can actually run a run a sidecar and then attach your your other other things into that. Um, you know, your, your data on Kubernetes in this case would be ClickHouse. I'm sure this is like, in, it, this is somewhere in the world, someone is actually using in a, in a very advanced fashion, it all orchestrated and integrated that I don't know in, in some other fashion where, you know, access to, to, this, to this type of environment is, is super easy and, and made possible by, you know, when a node dies, it automatically provisions another. If a if a if a you know data a replica is lost, it actually forks another replica from a, from the 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 primary or the source. So all of that are possible by operators and driving the operators. So that's that's where I want to say. 
that's all I wanted to say about uh, the, the Kubernetes. Basically, this is more like an exploration uh, talk. And in the 90 days of ClickHouse, I've done a bunch of other things. Um, I've looked at the certain areas of, of ClickHouse, which we didn't get into too much uh, in terms of the data integration. Uh, Alternity has, has uh, also released um, a sync connector, which is actually using Kafka and, and more advanced connection to the ClickHouse. There's a bunch of other, other stuff like the um, engines and the integration. But I want to talk about minute on the on the community as, as someone actually commented on 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 the community data on kubernetes is is, is very important for the day if you're actually thinking of of um, putting your database or stateful workloads into kubernetes clickhouse as it is a, a part of the player in in our um, area uh, Alternative is, is also a leader, like I mentioned, they have been an amazing open source contributor to not only uh, ClickHouse, but also for the uh, data on Kubernetes ecosystem. And, uh, and this is where I work at Sister Data. We plan and, 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 and also we are very excited to be part of the, the community and you're most welcome to um, you know, join the conversation wherever we are. I have had a very nice conversation with Robert from Alternity during Percona Live to contribute more, collaborate more, and and produce more on um, on on our community. So, and I also want to thank everyone that who actually makes a, a dent on the data on Kubernetes community and 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 um, and give back to the community. Hopefully, uh, it wasn't too boring. I wanted to talk about uh, what Sister data is about uh, the founded by 2020 by, by, by Shiv. Uh, he's our, our CEO and principal. Uh, we are an early startup with a $3 million uh, seed investment. There are more investments in the way. Uh, we are focusing on the ClickHouse and infrastructure operations. Uh, we spoke about ClickHouse uh, and we are going to be uh, focusing on services around managed services, support and consulting. And last but not least, uh, we are hiring globally. Uh, if you are looking for a role in these areas, and if you're like uh, excited about new and emerging technologies and want to hack ClickHouse a little bit with me and, and some other fun people, uh, please do let me know. And um, that's all I had, Bart, for today. No, it isn't. Because I want to hear more about DOK Turkey. Tell us about that. All right, all right. So DOK Turkey. So data on Kubernetes is 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 growing around the globe, right? So we are actually we have contributors, we have uh, audience, we have attendees um, from Turkey. Yes, I am from Turkey. I live in Istanbul yeah. when I'm not sailing, <laughs> um, and um, and we have some other members who are actually in the community. And uh, we've done our first meetup in Istanbul um, and uh, that went really well. Uh, we've had a lot of attention because that was the first get together yeah. uh, after the pandemic. Well, pandemic is not 100% No, unfortunately yet, not, but, but in a better, in a better phase. To, yeah. yeah, we went deep down, like 90 degrees, you know, down underwater maybe. Uh, but now we're coming up, we're swimming and we're going to float. And we're going to be flying and i'm sure we're going to be having uh, i'm seeing um company meetups company um events conferences are ramping up come fall q4 uh, this year we are actually planning on on um data on kubernetes istanbul meetup in person uh please do follow posts and um and i will be announcing dates uh we're going to be having speakers um and we're gonna have a fun basically enjoy share that's all we do yeah i think it's great and it's something that we've actually been talking about for quite some time because you know we're big fans of doing things in different countries different cultures different languages my turkish is absolutely awful um i promise it will improve it won't be good but it will improve considering how low it is it can only improve um I suppose data on Kubernetes in Turkish, would we just say data on Kubernetes or would you say something else? Well, that's that's it. Well, we could do Turkish, we could do English. Um, I mean, you know, like 
there will if we if we actually invite uh, international speakers which is which is very interesting for the local community yeah. to be honest um that would be english normally and um, and then we can have um hopefully this will grow enough to make it a one single day event with the two tracks that's in right and turkish that's right. um my expectations are are like you bart always high we keep it high yes and and uh, as much as we can reach it's perfectly fine but i agree with you pandemic is not over we're not back into the um you know full cycle yet it's going to ramp up as we ramp up we're going to grow the community and 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 do share and 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 that's all matters. No, I, think, I think i think it's absolutely correct i like you said thinking big i would also love to do a meetup on a boat i mean kubernetes is all about the nautical theme it yes makes too much sense not absolutely to do it. so I, we definitely got to get that in there anyway alkin as usual an absolute pleasure you are an accomplished author you've spoken in many places about many different topics it's always very nice to catch up with you Before we finish, can I have you not share your screen um, so I can Absolutely. share mine really quickly? Okay, good. Uh, so as always, while you are giving, you know, while our speakers are giving their amazing talks, um, we have our amazing artist who's in the background, Angel, and he created this artistic depiction while you were talking about the different topics that were being mentioned. Um, so we see quite a few different things here. I think the, the nautical theme is also very clear. And anyway, this was a lot of fun. Very practical. I I think it, you you like you said it wasn't a you know talk about the boring parts about ClickHouse. Very very practical for people that are you know trying to take a look at this. Also always nice to see the collaborative effort. Like you said that you're interacting with Robert from Altinity. That there's a, a good connection there about people that are in different parts of the space, but at the same time having these overlaps coming together and collaborating. Great to see that. So perhaps in the next live stream we do with you, maybe we'll get need we'll need to get Robert and other people in the ClickHouse world um, to be able to share these experiences together, um, and we can do a panel. So that would be an, that would be awesome. I, be I'll really be happy to join and help. Good, um, Alkin. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us, folks. Alkin is couldn't be easier to find. His name is Ask DVA on Twitter. He's also very active in our Slack. So if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out and he will get Thank them answered much. accordingly. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for the invite. All right. Take care. Have